monitoring uh, with with the lab solution. So, Jan, it's in your hands. Thank you very much, uh, Adolfo, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, it was very nice to be invited to this forum of uh, specialists within the freeze drying business. And uh, I really hope that this will be an annual event that we can uh, repeat every year. I'm not promising that we will have a new product every year uh, within the freeze drying uh, area, but uh, we could definitely participate with some uh, topics. Uh, my plan here is to uh, take you behind the scenes, uh, uh, explain to you uh, and share with you some of the considerations that we have had uh, with our designs of, uh, of uh, say, freeze drying related equipment uh, and, uh, and definitely talk about and share with you some of the challenges we have seen in the, uh, especially in the pharmaceutical business with with these uh, freeze dryers that have the automatic loading and unloading systems, where it all gets very, uh, say, complicated, uh, at least challenging to to uh, to measure uh, temperature, other parameters into these units because it's all under sterile conditions, it's all under class uh, 10 or whatever uh, conditions. So, so it really gets uh, more complicated than ever, also for us as a, as as manufacturers. So um, we will um, we will go through this uh, presentation, and uh, I hope that it will uh, work for us. Um, the first slide is just a little bit of, of information about myself. I've been in, into uh, freeze drying for the most of my professional life. Before I joined the lab, I was in a company that manufactured freeze dryers, and uh, then. Because of that, I know uh, roughly how a freeze dryer is designed, and I know all the challenges in the in the design itself. When joining L Lab, I was uh, then into uh, or we are into validation equipment, and so I know now from from all the angles uh, how you should be able to validate a freeze dryer. So um, so I joined L Lab in in 2004. Uh, Elab is uh, is a little bit older than that. It's actually from uh, from 1949. Uh, today we are around 430 employees. It it is uh, increasing every week, so probably it's more than that uh, this week. Uh, we are about 130 people in Denmark, and we used to be equipment manufacturers only. Uh, but recently, we also went into validation services and, and consulting businesses. So, so now we are covering the whole, uh, uh, say, the whole process of, um, of, of, of validating and consulting and helping people to, to do validation if they don't want to do it themselves. We have offices around the world. We have uh, many affiliates which are listed on this slide. Uh, and uh, then we have distributors in all other places of the of the globe, more or less. So, so we are very close to you, and that's also the idea of of Ella, uh, making, uh, say, a global appearance with local uh, service. And um, just to show you a little bit of what we are doing, uh, what we will talk about today is the one on the left, the data loggers. Uh, we have also. Uh, Cable systems like uh, this Eval Pro, which is, uh, say, not really uh, the best choice for freeze drying because of the feed through and the, all the challenges of having, a, a, say, a, a vacuum tight chamber. Uh, so people tend to prefer the to prefer the data loggers. We also uh, are now into monitoring, which is also something that came up some uh, three, four years ago, maybe even more. Time flies. Uh, with the with the handheld group of uh, of uh, say monitoring equipment uh, that could be for storage that could be for uh, for all applications uh, and then uh, as I said we are into the validation services including calibration and now lately also in the consulting uh, business so this is a little bit about the company itself. Uh, before we develop this new uh, Liopro, which would be the topic of today, we have been into freeze drying for for more than 15 years. So, it's, so the application of freeze drying is not is definitely not new to us. We are we are having all these uh, solutions that are shown here, 
uh, we uh, can do shelf mapping, we can do vacuum measurement inside the uh, freeze dryer, uh, we can do uh, different kind of, of sample measurements as well, uh, but we were never able to address the ones specifically for the ELUS system, the automatic loading and unloading systems. So that was the reason why we thought we need to go into something that can be applied to these uh, freeze dryers. Uh, these freeze dryers are very common now in the pharmaceutical business. Uh, more or less every second of those are, are where it's uh, where you produce in the freeze dryer for the pharmaceutical industry are having these uh, unloading and uh, loading and unloading systems. So. So none of the previous shown uh, solutions were really appropriate or fully appropriate for that. So, so we looked back and we looked into why, why do we have this uh, temperature measurement at all? And uh, one of the reasons is, or some of the reasons are definitely uh, based on the application itself, that uh, we want to measure the product uh, temperature because we want to detect the status of the sample itself. And, and primarily because we want to know from a freeze drying angle, we want to know when the primary drying is over and the secondary drying can be started. And that's a that's a big thing uh, to know that more more accurately because you can save a lot of time and you and therefore also a lot of money uh, when you know that more accurately and you can shift them to the secondary drying. So. Um, so uh, that was the that was the the, the intention from an application point of view. Uh, as I said, we have been into this uh, at this application of restoring for many years already. Uh, but we looked at the market and we found that they were they were there was something missing. There was some uh, some solutions missing that that we believed that we could that we could provide. And, and definitely some, some of the most important thing is that we, we need to measure the, the sample temperature inside the vial. So it will be a, a contact measurement. And, and because of that, we need to be very careful about how the sensor design is made. So, uh, so we are not affecting the sample too much. We, we cannot do it without any, any effect to the sample. We know that. Uh, but we can try to minimize the effect as much as possible. And that, that means we need to make a very tiny sensor. We need to make sure that we can position it uh, repeatedly in the, in the position in the, inside the vial. And we also want to be able to measure from at very many uh, points in, in, inside the freeze wire. We're not talking about a few points. We are talking about multiple points, typically from 70 to 100 in the big uh, pharmaceutical freeze dryers. So we want to cover that in one in one test, not to have to split up the uh, sessions and split up the chamber into to several sectors, because then we have an issue with the with the FDA compliance afterwards that it was not taken at the same day at the same time. And how can we then compare? So um, that that was one of the things that were interesting or, or say important for us to look at and then secondly that we wanted to still continue with offering loggers that means data loggers and not only uh, transmitters so uh, from a from a compliant point of view we are not accepting any any uh, say measurement gaps any data gaps at all that goes at least for the validation part of this, uh, we also want to use, on, or, or our clients also want to use this device now for the for the batch control, and we can then discuss if it's as much, uh, say, important for the for the batch control to make sure that we have all data. Uh, I think FDA is less uh, strict on that, but definitely for the validation part, we cannot accept any data loss at all. Then uh, it was important for us uh, also to make one data logger for all the different vial sizes, and and uh, and that is uh, that is to respect our clients that they don't have to in, invest in a lot of of different data loggers because we we know that people are using very many sizes of, of vials, so they shouldn't uh, they should be able to use the same design with some 
adaptations, that means some accessories, uh, and I will come back to that and show you that later. Uh, but it should generally be the same logger for all for all the vial sizes. And then, of course, uh, and that's something we have had for, for, for all the time, we have a very sophisticated uh, software, uh, so we can make all these kind of reports all Part 11 compliant very, very easily. And uh, and of course the the new LiPro data logger is is part of that uh, is part of that software and can be organized from from that. So that that was the uh, say the, the reasons why um, we have some uh, some considerations of course uh, about uh, measuring surface temperatures and to us and to you this is not really a, a walk in the park. This is um, this is very kind of complicated because we're talking about a, a environment that is under vacuum at least in parts of the of the process, and and we will see different kind of, of thermal resistances in inside this. So um, so we have to do this contact uh, sensors, and then it will be it could be problematic to the to the uh, process itself, but. We uh, we looked at uh, at these uh, systems that were available and also uh, what was important when talking to to people to um, to our our audience to our to our clients and of course we we need to look at very much the sensor itself it should be uh, non conductive material it should be uh, minimally invasive that means it should not make any uh, say impact on the on the uh, measurement uh, on the sample itself it should have no or very little uh, self heating and it should be flexible so uh, and 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 the tip should be very fine uh, say defined uh, very uh, easily because we want to repeat the measurements themselves then uh, as i mentioned before they should uh, be connected to wireless data loggers, so loggers should be inside the chamber to avoid these uh, these feed through that we call them uh, feed through systems, where the sensor goes from outside to the inside, and there could be leak leak uh, possibilities, and it could je jeopardize the integrity of the chamber. And then uh, uh, the loggers should be as small as possible, and uh, and if you look at the configuration on the shelf, then it should ideally match the vial sizes. That means it should be able to replace some vials, few vials, as few as possible, to uh, make sure that, that we are not taking too much away from the production itself. And um, and again, it was uh, it, they should be specially designed for the uh, for the ELUS system, the unloading unloading system. And then finally, uh, it should be able to work on completely uh, unattended and for very long time uh, when whenever working with data loggers we also we always have a time issue with the battery life and with the sample uh, say memory we want it in a memory we want it in a, a battery operated memory so there were con considerations about what should the, these sizes be what should be the maximum uh, free storing uh, capacity and we know that that many of these cycles takes days. Uh, fortunately for us, um, you don't really need very high sample rates. That means very often samples, uh, you can live with uh, say several seconds or even minutes before, because it, it's a very slow responsing uh, process. Um, so, um, so we look into the uh, norm. Uh, we, we we took a, a look at the norm that is for specifically for for freeze drying. There is a 1348 uh, norm, which is uh, together with some uh, FDA recommendation and some ISPE recommendation. But uh, th this is really the only norm that is available that tells about how you should make validation or, or qualification of a freeze drying. And that goes specifically for the for the shelf uh, mapping. To make sure that the shelf uh, temperature distribution is according to the manufacturer's uh, specification, and if you look at this norm, and you've probably seen that already yourself, then it's not very clear. It's very, uh, say, fluffy. Uh, it only tells that uh, that you should have these uh, 
uh, say intra and intra shelf variations. That means across one shelf and uh, and from from between all the shelves, and uh, and it that should be done at atmospheric pressure. It says in this one, uh, and that is because that's the worst case scenario. And it should uh, include a range of temperatures. That means uh, not specific any temperatures and not any starting and ending points. Uh, and the number of temperature sensors should be uh, specified and not mentioning anything about these numbers. So we had to go into uh, dialogue with our with our clients and ask them what are they actually doing and, and how do they look at it? What are what is written into their SOPs? And uh, and we found that that uh, when you take an overall view, a helicopter view of the uh, of the answers we got back was uh, that you should use five measuring points per shelf, and that they should be distributed so you can monitor, say, the worst case across the shelf, and that means in in the corners and in the center. That was the first thing that came out of that. We should uh, also be be sure to measure on all shelves because you have product on all shelves. So it, it was not enough what some people responded back that you should do it on the upper shelf, the mid shelf and the lower shelf, but it should be on all shelves. And I'm not saying that because we are into uh, offering equipment and we want to offering as much equipment as possible, but this is really what, what came back to, the, to, to us. Um, and, and that is of course to make sure that the complete load is covered by these uh, measurements. And then uh, it was also important uh, that it was on fully loaded as well as empty shelves. Uh, and that again is, re say, related to the fact that you, you can do, uh, say, quite easily the empty shelf, but that doesn't tell you how the free store reacts on a fully load. So if you want to, to know exactly how your samples, uh, your vials are treated, you need to do both. Then, uh, then we also got uh, the information back that it should be ambient pressure uh, during the cooling phase temperature. That means when you when you freeze down your samples, uh, that is at ambient temperature. Uh, then, uh, then that is followed by the heating phase where where you also apply the vacuum. So you should you should do both. Uh, and and this is really just to set to tell that this reflects fully the the process itself. So, um, so that is why, uh, from from a, 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 say a compliance point of view, you want to imitate exactly your your process itself. And then you could uh, you could uh, say with the, with regards to the temperature uh, scale that you should uh, of course cover the whole scale. That means uh, typically from from uh, say minus 60 to, to plus 40 degree, which is the probably the most lowest temperature you have during your process, and up to the up to the, your highest temperature, and then you could decide in uh, these decrements uh, could be 20 degree, 10 degree, whatever you decide on. But you should definitely have them different temperatures uh, measuring that. What happens with the with the measurement themselves, and then. Then you should do the exactly the same when you heat up. Uh, so basically, it will require a lot of tests or one test with a lot of, uh, say, uh, plateaus uh, during the, uh, the the test itself. And then uh, what was also important to uh, to understand for us is that the, the the product temperature itself or the shelf temperature should be to be uh, defined as accurate as possible. And that uh, is maybe a little bit of surprise. Uh, in, uh, in previous measurements, when you measure across a shelf, you are basically interested to know what is the, the shelf difference or the temperature difference across the shelf. But if you want this to be really uh, used for a batch control and for a high say high detection of the real temperature and avoid these meltdown and avoid losing your batch, then it should also be the highest uh, possible uh, accuracy. So, right, uh, I have prepared a, um, a small video for you. 
Freeze drying or lyophilization is the preferred method for preserving sensitive products with acceptable stability, shelf life, and quality. Product temperature is an essential quality attribute and process parameter in freeze drying. LLAB's new innovative and patent pending TrackSense Lyo Pro is the most versatile solution for temperature mapping and batch control, unmatched in accuracy, performance, and reliability. Lyo Pro ensures that your freeze dryer functions in accordance with current norms and is making your process development faster and easier. Lyo Pro is ideal for freeze dryers in a CGMP environment with isolators and automatic loading as it fits all vial sizes by using the LiOPro Nest Adapter. You simply click the data logger to the correct logger nest to achieve the right height and diameter. Then connect your vial with the LiOPro stopper clip and introduce the minimally invasive user-replaceable thermocouple sensor into the stopper clip. It doesn't get any easier. The stopper clip is available in various sizes to suit applications specific to your products and packaging material. Once vials are filled inside the isolator, the LiOPro loggers are positioned at predetermined points on the loading line, allowing for precise temperature measurements at the critical locations inside the freeze dryer, with a capacity of more than 100 data loggers in one session. The wireless LiOPro communicates the data in real time while simultaneously logging the info on its internal memory, helping you validate and or monitor the process all the way through stoppering. The TrackSense LiOPro technology offers valuable tools for the biotech and pharmaceutical industry to control, optimize, and improve the freeze-drying process, all while ensuring the highest level of data integrity. Global expertise with local reach. That came out of these studies that we made. Uh, that that uh, say that solution is what we believe is the best one. So uh, first of all, as I mentioned before, uh, this Lyo Pro, as we call it, is a is a real data logger. It's not a it's not a transmitter. Uh, there are transmitters on the market which we don't find are uh, uh, say relevant for the validation uh, because they, there could be data gaps uh, and they could not these data cannot be retrieved afterwards. Having a having a memory. Uh, and, uh, and a battery uh, that, that uh, say, supports that memory, uh, we are absolutely sure that there are no gaps and that would be the Part 11 compliance. Uh, we have made it as compact as possible. It was not very clear to see that, but you can see on the, on the uh, picture that it has the size of these uh, uh, smallest vial, the, the, the 2R vial. Uh, and then we lift it up with different accessories to to say be on same uh, level as the bigger vials, uh, up to 100 R vials. And then uh, of course this compactness is important because uh, uh, we don't want to replace too many of the of the real uh, say uh, vials that are in the production. So you are not losing too much of the batch itself. We are having this very, very tiny sensor. It's, uh, it's really very tiny. It's 0.5 by one millimeter, roughly. Uh, so it will affect what is happening inside the vial. We cannot, we cannot uh, say prove anything else, but it will have the minimal, uh, say, impact on what is happening. Um, and, and, uh, and of course, we, we have uh, this need of having many many measuring points of uh, freeze to us. Uh, if we go by the five uh, measuring points per shelf, then uh, a standard freeze to having 15 shelf would be 75 measuring points at the same time. So uh, so that is that is the reason why it was very important for us to have a, a, the maximum number of, uh, of loggers operating at the same time. So, um, so no data gaps. Uh, 
memory uh, with a lot of uh, capacity. Uh, well, I, I mentioned already that uh, that sample rate is, uh, is probably not one second, but uh, if it was one second, we have 28 hours of, uh, of memory capacity. Uh, if we just make that to 30 seconds, which is probably more relevant for the freeze drying, we can operate for 35 days before the, the memory is out. And, uh, and this should be sufficient. I've never heard about a freeze drying cycle taking more than, say, five to, uh, to maximum eight days. Typically, it's around 72 uh, hours. Uh, and uh, we just learned from the previous presentation that they uh, tried to cut it down from 72 hours to, to 24 hours. So most of them are around one to two days. Uh, we are running with this battery and, and you should not be too scared about uh, having a logger with the battery because we have 20, more than 20 years of experience with these uh, batteries. So the battery is not new, the battery technology is not new and, uh, and all the electronics are also well proven. Uh, they are designed in a different way because of the shape of the logger, but it, it's, it's basically the same. So, uh, and, and battery exchange is something you can, you can do yourself. We, uh, we will uh, emphasize on, on the number of loggers. Uh, this is important. This is something of a challenge also from us as a manufacturer that we have all these, uh, we have this need of all these uh, loggers running at the same time. So that, that goes back to to the design of our software and design of our hardware that we should be able to communicate in between these two, uh, say, parts of the of the system itself. Um, when it comes to these uh, ALUS system, uh, we, uh, we, we had to think differently compared to what we had with our previous logger system. We had to think that uh, either it should be easy to operate through different kind of isolator systems, and that means a manual handling, or it should be able to do it also with robotic uh, handling. So we uh, we were looking at different solutions for the how to connect the logger to the vial, and uh, we came up with this logger clip, which is the one that uh, that is shown on that picture, uh, that really gives the maximum uh, benefit for the operator only to have one device. And, uh, and being able to either operate it, uh, as I said, through an uh, isolator just in front of the freeze drying on the loading plate, or also being able to adapt it to a robotic system. And, um, and that one is made, uh, made of a peak material. If you look at this picture, you will also see there are space for a, for a buffer vial in between the measuring vial and the log itself. And uh, this is just something that we also discovered that, that people have different opinions about this, uh, that they also want to be able to put a vial in between because they are too afraid that, that the uh, logger will influence on the measured vial. And so far, we, we are, have not been able to detect uh, a big difference, but it's just available as it is. So you can place a vial in between uh, if you want to. So, um, so this is this is the whole design of of, of putting them together. Um, we also talked uh, also already about the sensor itself. It's a thermocouple uh, design. We are using thermocouple because they have the tiniest uh, dimensions from a physical point of view, and they they can also be uh, say designed with an open tip, what we call an open end or open tip. And that means it's a very well-defined point uh, of measurement. It's not an aerial measurement, but it's a point, a point measurement. And that means uh, that that we know exactly where the where the sensor measuring point is placed inside the inside the vial. Um, we we know there are different religions to to this uh, where it should be placed. We have heard. Different feedback. Uh, when I was young, I was told that the uh, measuring point should be exactly a, a one millimeter above the, the, say, the glass surface inside the vial. And uh, and, I, we, and now we are also told that some people would like to be it at the surface of the glass itself. 
To me, that will give some influence of the glass itself, and that means the shelf temperature influence. Uh, but but just that this stopper clip or, that we have talked about uh, will will allow you to place it repeatedly in the same position. That's the most important part for us. We're talking about these sensors, thermocouple based. They're very easy and very simple to replace. Uh, so and you can have them in different lengths as well. So uh, for the for normal setup, these 30 uh, centimeters, which are the default, would be would be enough for all situations. And this is also enough when it comes to calibration. I will touch that subject in a in a minute. Uh, but but it's just uh, it's just important that these sensors should be easy replaceable and should be easily easy uh, to handle both for operation but also for for calibration. Uh, we looked into the uh, say the vial sizes that are usually um, uh, operated in the business, and we found that that the two R vial that means that the tiniest one, the uh, six R vial, and the 10 R vials are covering almost uh, half of the vials that are used in the in the industry. So of course we are focusing on the on these um, uh, and 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 of course the 2 R vial is probably the most delicate one. Also if we look into this uh, buffer vial uh, system, so so uh, so. But again we wanted to have one logger for all the different uh, vial sizes. And and uh, and only a few accessories are needed to uh, say reconfigure from one vial size to to the other. Uh, most of the costs are already in the logger itself. And of course, then we want to have a, a, a say live data uh, for the validation purpose. It's not really a must. It's always nice to know what's happening inside the freeze dryer. Uh, because we are, we have to do with very high costs, and we want to know exactly when something is happening that could jeopardize this uh, this load. But definitely, when it comes to batch control, we want to know exactly what is happening so we can save our costs. And uh, and that means we have a, a system with a uh, we call it an access point that is a device in this picture, and. And that device is outside the chamber and and is not included in the say the design of the of the freeze dryer itself. It's something that comes next to uh, delivered with the validation system. So you don't have to take into account something that has to be built into the chamber when when say making decisions on 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 what freeze dryer supplier you want to go with. This is just something that adds on. Uh, from the outside, and uh, because freeze dryers have side glasses, there are no really challenges uh, with freeze drying with regards to transmitting uh, data from the logger to the uh, to the uh, access point outside. So um, this is also important for you to understand that that uh, we are not part of the say integration of the freeze dryer itself. It's a it's a separate system to the freeze dryer design. That that can be used any time. Uh, if if we are talking about big units and big systems, uh, you might need to have more than one access point. But then you just add another one and you run it all by the Ethernet connection. So it's it's pretty simple. It's plug and play, and um, and 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 that is the reason why why uh, why you can have this uh, afterwards after your design. And when you go into the validation part or the batch control part, you just add these uh, these devices themselves. Um, but we, well, you need a, a, a reader station as we as I've shown you already, but that is just to identify the the logger position itself. And and with the very advanced software, you can then do all all different uh, things to make sure that your reports will also uh, say reflect. How and where the sensors are are measured. Okay, now we go a little bit away from the hardware. Uh, I've, I promised uh, Adolfo that it, this should not be too commercial, uh, but it's a, a little difficult to make it non-commercial when we are talking, uh, say, devices and solutions. 
Um, so I also just want to give you a little bit of information on the software itself. Uh, the software has been the major part of all our validation solutions and now also the monitoring solutions that we have. We have many people involved in this. Uh, we have many installations worldwide. So really we are looking at the feedback from the market and we are implementing that uh, very easily. It's, it's our own software. It's not a, a shelf system that we have modified for our use. We have written the first line and also the, the last line uh, so far in, in that software. So, and we have a, so a software support team as well to take care of uh, of all the, you know, when the software gets larger and larger and more and more comprehensive, you also get into very many questions about the use of it. Uh, we believe that it's pretty intuitive and, and easy to run. So, so this is also the feedback that, that we get from the market. Um, a little bit of information, it's based on, uh, on a database. So again, from a compliance point of view, and that's the topic of today, uh, you cannot uh, alter any data. You cannot remove any data. If you don't like them, they are still in the in the database. But but you can suppress them in your analysis. You can exclude them from your analysis. But then then it will also be mentioned in the in the software that you have excluded this and that. So uh, so it is fully compliant. Uh, we can operate it with access manager. That means only people that are involved or are allowed. Uh, are or authorized are allowed to to operate it. We have the, the 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 three, say the most important parts of the Part 11 compliance. The FDA compliance is the is the, this access manager is the electronic signature and is the audit way. So uh, of course this is embedded into the to the software. And then on top of that we have all these analytical reports. Um, so uh, the access manager is uh, is a way of, of defining people, how they are uh, operating, what they are what they can, are allowed to do, and it's a way of also uh, making sure that everything is according to the rules and uh, and uh, everything is documented. So access manager is definitely an important part of the of the part 11 compliant. The second one is uh, electronic signatures, and uh, without being too uh, detailed on this, because of time restrictions, uh, then uh, then th this is a this is a workflow uh, way of looking at it. So you can have different, say, rule or roles into the uh, into the software. You can have different people having different roles, and they are all listed, and uh, and even on the Say the overall uh, list of sessions or tests that you have been doing, you can see these. Uh, what what is the status of each of these uh, tests from from the outside from that list? So um, so this is this is important uh, information uh, about the software that uh, it has to be organized in in a easy and smooth way. There's all, of course also an audit trail. There, there are in fact two audit trails. There is one audit trail for for the uh, for that specific session, that test that you are doing, that validation study or batch control that you are doing, and there is one for the overall uh, database. And there, of course, there is a cross reference between these two. But but this will be listed with uh, with the text, with the timestamp, user, in, and 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 all the information that that should be available for a, for an inspector when it when it comes to uh, yeah to in, to inspection of of your tests. Or you 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 uh, set up, and then we have uh, something that is not really compliant uh, or not required by uh, by the FDA uh, Part 11 compliance, but it's very nice to have, and that is uh, a, a documentation of where you place your your loggers, and uh, we call that a unit, uh, and and it's just to mention that you have very nice uh, picture. A documentation of these uh, up to 16 pictures you can embed into into your report and those will show exactly where you have placed each individual uh, each individual sensor um, so that that is part of the say the, the the way of making life easier for you to operate the loggers and to make documentation of what you have been doing the next one is also something that is really uh, important and um, 
And we have been looking at other systems available, and most of them are, are have to go back to to uh, factory calibration to be uh, adjusted or to be verified. We have made it available directly in the software that you can do uh, user what we call user calibration. You can calibrate the sensors yourself, uh, and 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 the, the the information, the offset values are stored in the in the in the logger and in the software. So it means that our factory calibrations are in the logger and your user calibration, these offsets, they are stored in the software. And the software will recognize the logger every time is is in the in the reader station when started up and it will apply these values to the uh, to the session. So so that is uh, that is something that is important. It's, a, it's very natural for us, but it's important for our clients that they are, there are no downtime uh, whenever you are waiting for the loggers to come back from some external source that have been, done, been doing your calibration. Uh, we are recommending, because of the open tip design of the thermocouple, we are recommending it to be in a dry block. Uh, so whenever it comes to the equipment itself for the calibration, we are, we are, we are looking at the dry block uh, setup. Uh, which is also the easiest way of doing it and very mobile, very portable. Uh, so, so this goes very much hand in hand. And then uh, finally, there is a, a very advanced part of the software as well, where you, and that was designed for specifically freeze drying. We have something called a 3D heat mapping. And to make it very short, you will take even the smallest difference in temperature and you will make the coldest tem temperature blue and the hottest temperature red, and then you can make it into a 3D mapping by uh, by uh, seeing what are the temperatures across the shelf. So even if the temperature is only half a degree across, you will see very hot red at one side and very cold blue at the other side. So so this is also a part of our software package that you can have these uh, these evaluations of of temperature distributions and. Uh, and that's specifically for the health, for the shelf, uh, for the shelf mapping. And you can have it into a video as well if you want to show your your operators or your bosses that uh, this is exactly how the temperature is, is distributed across. The software is uh, not only locally based on your PC, but it can also be put on a uh, on a more uh, bigger IT system. That means on a server, client server, even on. Citrix and these uh, fancy Amazon Web Services uh, and others, we can we can apply that. It's already embedded. You don't have to have extras. It's already in the software, and we also provide a, a say a database with our software. It's not a huge one, but it's a it's a good start at least. Uh, so um, we are running these uh, Microsoft uh, SQL databases. But of course, you can have your own database and you can implement it there so you can have multiple users across your organization. Uh, so, so this is just to, to tell that we are not only uh, talking about a, a, a local uh, thing. The last one that I will show you uh, is a video, uh, actually to, uh, on site video that was made by one of our uh, clients, uh, or we made it at one of our clients, and that just shows you in practical use, uh, the the way that it, that the logger is uh, say embedded into a production and used. So let's start that up.
that the video was uh, taken at one of our clients in Denmark, and I know that Rasmus from that company is also listening uh, to this uh, presentation, but uh, it was very kind that we could make these uh, these uh, videos on site or this video on site. Just to sum up on this, uh, the logger is made from a, say, a compliant material. It's made of peak. We have uh, built-in transmitters for the transmis transmission of data. So no add-on, uh, only add-on is the, the access point to receive the data that is made up with thermocouple cables. Um, the dimension is uh, based on the size of the, uh, say, the vial, the smallest vial. And the temperature range is minus 60 to plus 60. Uh, it doesn't mean that it cannot take other temperatures. If you look at the operational temperature range is from minus 65 to 140. It's not designed for for, um, for measuring true sterilization. It's, it, it will it will stop measuring, uh, but and only give you data from minus 60 to uh, to plus 60. The accuracy is also important that. Uh, that you have, well, as I mentioned, with the batch control, it's very important that you have an accurate temperature, and uh, and we are trying to make it the best that we can. The 0.3 is, between you and me, uh, a, ra a rather conservative figure, but, uh, but we can definitely uh, guarantee that in all situations. And then, of course, a logger has, is exposed to vacuum, so also the vacuum conditions are from these very, very low uh, vacuum uh, statuses and up to the, uh, the, the, the pressure that you usually have within, uh, within a uh, sterilizer. Uh, 